Now let's move on to today's perspective guest. And nothing could have prepared us for the barbarity committed on Israeli soil on October the 7th, 2023. And nothing could have prepared us for the bitterness and brutality of the bombing of Gaza. Now those are the phrases used by my guest today at the start of his new book, Une terre doublement promise, Israel-Palestine, a siècle de conflit, which translates roughly as uh, a land doubly promised, Israel-Palestine, a century of conflict. Pierre Haskey is a geopolitical expert for Lobs magazine, in the past, he's worked for Agence France Presse. He was also a French newspaper Liberation's correspondent in Jerusalem in the early 1990s. And he joins me here on set. Thanks very much for coming in and talking Morning. to us today. Um, I mean, in the book, you talk about how the build-up um, to the events of the last six months started, obviously, a long, long time ago. And you look at it, don't you, through your eyes, if you like, from when you were there in the 1990s. Yes, I speak quite a lot about the Oslo Agreement because I was a correspondent in Jerusalem at that time. And this is the only time that there was an attempt to establish real peace in one century of, of conflict, uh, in a way. And, and I think it's important to understand why this failed uh, before we go into a new attempt to establish some kind of peace, or at least a political settlement. And what strikes me most is that those who sabotaged this peace in 93-95 uh, where on one side, the far right on the Israeli side, those who committed the Hebron massacre in 94, and those who killed uh, Itzhak Rabin, the prime minister, in 95. And on the other side, it was Hamas, who started a, a campaign of uh, suicide bombings that led to the election of Benjamin Netanyahu as prime minister, and they made sure that someone who was against the peace process would be prime minister. And these were quite marginal forces at that time. They were not at the center of the political game. Today they are. Uh, uh, the far right is in the coalition uh, with Netanyahu in, uh, on the Israeli side, and Hamas has established itself as the main political force. So 30 years of non-solving the uh, conflict, of, of uh, uh, letting it go its own life, has led to the extremists coming to the center of the, of the political game. And that's a big lesson that uh, all politicians uh, in that region should uh, look at pretty coldly. Do you think there's any way back? I mean, that moment when we had that handshake, I'm sure uh, people who were alive anyway will remember it, yes. when Yitzhak Rabin shook hands with Yasser Arafat. I mean, that feeling of positivity that there was at that point, is there any way back to that? No, because at that time you had some kind of wish to reconciliate between the two people. Uh, there was a lot of, of uh, uh, good feelings where people thought, OK, uh, we've been fighting each other for a long time and, and now let's turn the page. Today, I don't think anyone wants to reconcile. People want to separate at, the, at best uh, because they, they want the, the bloodshed to, to stop. But no one is, is in the mood for reconciliation. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second difference between the, those moments which were probably uh, historical, I mean, uh, this picture will remain as one of the key pictures of the 20th century, uh, is that you had a, a, the, the conflict between people who were fighting for the land. Today you have people who are fighting for God. Uh, religion has taken a major share of the, uh, the conflict today. And, and that complicates the search for compromise, because if you think that God is on your side, you don't compromise as easily as on, on borders, land and, uh, and economy. The imminent compromise, I suppose, is, is those hopes for that truce. It's just yes. a six-week truce. I mean, do you have any hopes for that? Yes, I think the, the conditions are... I mean, it's, it's a difficult negotiation, and, and, and as always in those negotiations, as long as it's not finished, everything can collapse. But it seems that, uh, that there are many conditions that are uh, in place. The, the, the level of uh, atrocity that we've seen in the past few days in Gaza uh, it certainly uh, calls for, for a ceasefire. The, Americans are, are rising their, the stakes in, in supporting a ceasefire. We just had a, this statement by uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president, who was probably the strongest call for an immediate ceasefire, as she, she put it. And, and there are strong divisions in the Israeli cabinet. So it, it seems that the conditions would be uh, good. But it's a temporary ceasefire. It's going to be 
six weeks at best uh, if no one violates the ceasefire in between and, and, and things can resume as it did in November. It, it stopped for uh, about 10 days and then it resumed. So uh, those six weeks will be uh, very short to start a political process and that's what everybody should work for in the international community, whether you are the US, Europe or the Arab world, because uh, these are the actors that have some kind of influence, more the Americans and, and a little bit Saudi Arabia and, and the Gulf states. You talk a lot as well, don't you, about the mentality of, of people in the Middle East. I mean, particularly, of course, I'm thinking of the Holocaust for Israelis, the Nakba for the Palestinians, deeply affecting mm. the minds of, of both sides and how difficult that makes it then for those two sides to be able to, to find any yeah. common ground. Yes, one of the big difficulties is that uh, each uh, trauma uh, is, is fundamental for each people, but they don't look at the trauma of the other side. And, and I'm telling a, a story in the, in the book where in 93, I tried to bring together two intellectuals, two, two academics, one Israeli, one Palestinian, who were willing to have a discussion on those issues. And, and, and it proved very difficult uh, for each one to accept uh, what the other side had uh, as a collective trauma. And it's true that uh, we saw uh, on October 7, those traumas come back to, to the front. Uh, the Israelis thought that the Shoah, the Holocaust was coming back uh, Netanyahu said it was the, the day where most Jews were killed since the Holocaust. And on the other side, the Palestinians felt that it was Nakba all over again, the expulsion, the mass expulsion of the Palestinians and the pictures from those Palestinians uh, going from northern Gaza to southern Gaza were exactly what they had in mind for 1948. So, uh, the, it, you will not have peace as long as you don't understand what the other side mm fears uh, most. And that's really one of the lessons that I draw from history and from living in that region. And you also, don't you talk about the, uh, the reasons why perhaps minds don't change, simply because on the Israeli side, people don't see an awful lot on their televisions, for example, of what's happening in Gaza and vice versa for the Palestinian side. Yes, well. and, and this uh, definitely uh, gives an important role to the international uh, actors uh, because uh, it left together, left alone, uh, Israelis and Palestinians will not find a way uh, to, to settlements and to peace because uh, they don't look at each other's uh, suffering and they, and they feel that, that they are the victims, both of them. And, and so uh, the Americans at the moment have the key role. Uh, they haven't been able to use it. And, and uh, Joe Biden's gamble, in a way, after October 7 was that by being on the side of Israel when it was attacked, he could have some influence uh, when the time of of a political initiative would come. It hasn't been able to prove it until now. Uh, it's getting close to the time where he either proved it or he will be considered as having totally failed in this new Middle East crisis. And that could have a cost for him in the forthcoming election. So uh, there's a big, lo a lot of things at stake for, for Joe Biden in this crisis. And so we should see a lot of action in the next few weeks from the Americans on the political and diplomatic front. Pierre Hasky, thanks very much for coming in and talking to us yeah. today. Our first uh, guest on Perspective at its new time now of uh, 9.35 Paris time. So thanks Thank very you. much for uh, being our first guest.